Hit it. My name's Sam Mags, and this time, I'm actually recording the podcast. I'm Ian McAllister, and I've got an odd feeling of deja vu. I'm Jamie Adams, and I'm not c- going to continue this joke any further. And this is Brainwaves, Again. bringing you the best in board game and tabletop gaming news. These are the headlines for the week beginning 10th of December 2018. Is that a cool mini? It would seem not. Board and Dice have announced a merger with NSKN. And get them while they're hot! Big Potato have made a vending machine. All this and more coming up on Brainwaves. Our first headline this week is Cool Mini or Not stock price continue to fall as the company have reported losses of $4.1 million for the nine-month period that ended in September 2018. The company are blaming losses on Kickstarter revenues and just their, their Kickstarter endeavors this year not being as successful as they have been previously. Ian, I think this echoes some of your ideas that maybe this Kickstarter bubble and the miniature bubble is coming to an end. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that the Kickstarter bubble is coming to an end, but I do think there is some apathy and sort of um, fatigue with uh, big miniature Kickstarters now. There's so many out there. There's a lot of board games out there that just seem to go on Kickstarter, have lots of miniatures in their game, even if they don't really need them. Maybe standees would do, maybe counters would do but they just have miniatures in there because that's the thing that they think attracts a lot of money and in simon's case that has attracted a lot of money in the past but now it doesn't seem to be doing them quite as well and i do think there is a gen- yeah i think there is a sort of general fatigue within the board game community of these massive number massive numbers of miniature kickstars where maybe the game isn't actually all that great yeah the latest game is obviously um well the latest big big flagship game is obviously Cthulhu Death May Die, which backers won't see until I think it's 20, 2020. Well, right? so, so, of some, of the, some of the pledges are next year, but uh, basically what happened with Death May Die was because the huge miniature is so difficult to make, the as you pledged later and later within the campaign, the actual date you will get that game has drifted further and further onwards. So some people are not going to get that game till 2020. And by the time you get that game, is your enthusiasm still going to be there for that game? Reviews will have come in from people who have already got it that might have dampened your spirits down a bit and the secondary market for that game may have completely collapsed if you are planning to sell it on who knows well i think as you said ian the fatigue that may be coming or maybe not fatigue more apathy is that there's as you said so many miniatures heavy games that are coming out for kickstarter again and again and it might simply be people are voting with their wallets and they go i want this game it's got nice minis uh, but i don't want it i want this game because it's got a company that i trust it's got a, a designer that I trust. And for example, with Cthulhu Death May Die, it still made a lot of money. And part of that may be due to the Lovecraft uh, mythos theme. Also maybe down to the fact it's cool many or not the, the, the company. It may be down to Eric Lang and Rob Davio, you know, the big names that they've got designing it. So this idea of safe pair of hands. And talking about big news, we have another merger in the world of board games. Yes, Board and Dice and NSKN have merged. Uh, these are... Two companies, uh, two, two European companies that have come together to, to merge. We played Five Minute Chase earlier in the year. Uh, we liked it so much that we did a skit on it. We really, 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 really like that game. And uh, I really want to play a few more of their Board and Dice's games, their escape room game I've got a promo pack of to give a go of. But yeah, they've uh, they've hooked up with NSKN. There's been no announcements of any cancellations, so it seems like a really positive move for two smaller companies. They're going to get a larger presence, share costs of, across both companies. Uh, a statement from their Facebook page reads, we are thrilled to finally announce this to everyone. We have both worked together on many fields. We are friends outside working hours. And what's probably most important, both companies have excellent and successful games in their portfolios. We want to move to the next level in the board games industry, and we know we can do this together by joining our potentials under one refreshed board and dice brand so there's a new brand logo for board and dice uh, they're both going to be operating under the board and dice logo uh, they've already announced that they are going to be releasing new games in 2019 that including uh, dust in the wings sierra west uh, a second uh, follow-up to their escape tales game which is just out what's the expansion jamie 
Teotihuacan. Thank you, Jamie, because I can't pronounce that for the love of me. Uh, there's a Dice Letters expansion coming in, a new big box in the Exodus universe. So it seems like a really positive move for two smaller companies. And as we've said before on this cast, it's nothing to fear of companies merging together. That's just business and the way it works. Big Potato Games, publishers of such titles as Scroll, The Chameleon, and Clickbait, have announced they have installed a vending machine for their board games in Loading Bar in Dalston. Now, Loading Bar is a board game and table and gaming bar. It has several locations throughout, I believe, London and somewhere else. Throughout London and the south of England. Uh, Big Potato Games itself is based in Shoreditch, and they've announced that they want to, you know, getting this joint venture together is a great idea. You know, it's bringing the video game crowd, the board game crowd together. And that's not all. If you are a bar or a club or location that would like to stock and vend Big Potato's games, you can get in touch with Big Potato uh, to get one installed. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Yes, it's 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 wonderful. I think it's cool. It's very on brand for yes, them. Yes, they. Yeah, you can you can say a lot of things about Big Potato Games. They are always really with it in getting their games out there and to the populace. For example, at UK Games Expo, and I think at most of the expos they're going to, they have their big car, their van that they drive around in with games just stuffed in the back. Yeah, I think they take that to sort of corporate events and that kind of thing as well. Sort of trying to. Uh, sell their games as team building efforts and that kind of thing and that's really cool it's lovely to see a company sort of reaching out to people who don't necessarily think of board games as something they can use within their businesses and getting them out in front of people fantastic So uh, here at Brainwaves, we are always supportive of the smaller companies. And recently there has been an effort by a group of people to really put out a lot of print and play games. So these are games that you can download, print on your local printer or send to a shop for printing. And you now can get a lot of those games from PMP Arcade. Uh, this is a site much like Drive Through RPG or Drive Through Cards, where a lot of smaller publishers are putting out their stuff. And the creators get to keep about 70% of the proceeds that split up into different categories so you can find solo games you can find group uh, games for two you can find games for groups uh you can get games from as little as one dollar which is really cool and yeah you can search a lot of different companies and there's some of the larger sort of small press companies are on there already including button shy games they produce a lot of these sort of small wallet games which are sort of 18 cards only really cool design and it's something that i've always been investigating myself in my own design so it's really cool to see uh, a sort of aggregate site for a lot of these companies come together much like sort of steam and that kind of thing for pc gaming should be some really cool stuff on there so go check it out well going from new games to a very very old game indeed a game from what is assumed to be five thousand years ago a board game found uh during archaeological excavations in the ancient sumerian city of ur now uh, known now as tal al Mukayar, I apologize if I, my apologies if I got that wrong, in southern Iraq. A board game was found and has been christened the Royal Game of Ur. Two players with seven circular pieces each must move in a loop across a wooden board in an elongated H shape. In a very similar game to modern mechanics, if a piece, if your piece lands on an opponent's piece, that opponent's piece is knocked back to the beginning and you need to start again. The board game itself came to light again in 1922 where it was taken to the british museum for study however it took more than 50 years for rules to be matched and translated from a corresponding clay tablet i think it's fantastic to see the progenitor of you know board games kind of coming back into light and being re almost re-released and kind of brought into the light of our modern board game renaissance we can see where possibly some mechanics originated just get a look into a little bit more into the culture of those who came very very far before us and we've talked on yeah, the yeah, podcast it's... before about games from you know the early uh i think it's 10th 11th century or the 7th or 8th century and now we've yeah, got we one took off a lot of games in the garden yeah exactly and now we've got one that's five thousand years old that's amazing we're well, moving on to a slightly more serious story we know we like to juggle the silly and fun with the serious at brainwaves there has been a lawsuit brought by the City of Warren Police and Fire Retirement Systems and other uh, pension funds as well 
um, in road. Oh, they're based in Michigan, but the claim has been uh, sued in a federal court in Rhode Island against Hasbro in late September. The lawsuit alleges that Hasbro misled investors about its financial health. The allegations include Hasbro officials downplayed the extent uh, to which the company relied on sales from the financially well, unstable Toys R Us. And it misled investors and analysts about the sales conditions in Britain and the United Kingdom. And they were actually slightly risky. Also, the executives uh, may have inflated the price of the stock in order to sell it off, whilst at the same time encouraging others to invest in the company. Um, a claim is that 1.4 million shares have been sold, totaling about $147 million. Now, we'd like to state, for the record, that Hasbro vehemently denies these claims and will vigorously defend them. This is not uh, an opinion piece. This is merely a... Uh, a statement, as it were. And it's just something that we're going to keep our eyes on. Now, I'd like to turn over to our new license correspondent, Ian. Oh, yeah, sure. Yes, uh, yes, I've just been promoted to licensee correspondent for Brainwaves. IDW has announced that they are going to be producing a Metal Gear Solid game designed by Emerson, Mat Emerson Matsuki. Have I got Ma that right, Jamie? Matsuki or Matsuchi, I'm not too sure. Uh, he is the designer of Reef, uh, the Century Spice Road Eastern Wonders games, and Spectre Ops, which is probably the most relevant one for Metal Gear Solid there, sort of, uh, sort of XCOM-style board game. And uh, we don't really know much about it at the moment, other than it's it, it's just been announced. That's going to be coming out 2019, so most likely we'll see a sort of Gen Con or Essen. And that was just this last week at PAX Unplugged. We have Clank Legacy, yet another Legacy game coming out. But not only that, it is going to be Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. This is the Penny Arcade D&D &D podcast, or at least one of them. They have two or three of them at least. The folks who make Clank are going to be working with Penny Arcade to release a version of Clank in the Penny Arcade Acquisitions, Inquired universe, uh, Acquisitions Incorporated universe. Uh, and yeah, it'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm not a big fan of Clank, personally. I think I don't like the player elimination stuff, but it's proved massively successful. It's got loads of expansions, and this will hopefully help reach make board games reach a wider audience. So I can't really complain. Jamie. Sam. I've, I've really been enjoying Brainwaves lately. I um, have too. But really, what I want to know is just, what have you been playing lately? What's Ian been playing lately? You know, I don't even know what I've been playing lately. And I just want to know more about kind of the games you play and, and what you think about them. Well, funny you should mention that, Sam. Because as well as the wonderful, wonderful Brainwaves podcast that we have here in which everyone is listening to, hello out there, we also have a sister podcast called Idle Thoughts, where the three of us talk about games we've been playing and discuss them a little bit more. It's a little bit of a no looser way. format. That's exactly what I want. How do I How do I get that? Well, Sam, I can tell you how you can get that. For only $1 a month, you can get an extended version of the Brainwave podcast by joining our Patreon. Yes, that's right. You can get more of me, Sam, and Jamie talking nonsense on the regular cast. But if you want even more nonsense... For only $2 a month, you can get access to the Idle Thoughts podcast. Yes, me, Sam, and Jamie, just talking about the games we played in the previous month. We'll be talking about new games, old games, RPGs, anything we've played in the last few, uh, in the last month or so, maybe even the occasional computer game. Who knows? Tune in to our Idle Thoughts podcast for only $2 a month. We really appreciate any help you can give us. We are only $2 away from our first target, which will basically help make the podcast and the website sustainable. And then the sky is the limit after that. We are aim You can check out our Patreon for our next goal levels and how you can get involved. Thank you very much. Sam, does that, does that answer your question? So with Christmas just round the corner, this question comes to us from Simon Marr on Twitter, which and he was asking what we think the best games to play with your family are over Christmas. What do we think, guys? Tailor it to your family. If you've got a family that is happy to sit down and I don't have play... a family of tailors. Oh, no idea what you're talking about. Final off, I do have a family of tailors, quite literally. Uh, wow. Yeah, my mum's my uh, surname is Taylor. Anyway, 
Oh, it was a pun on a thing. Oh, and I turned it into a real thing. Uh, if you have a family that's happy to sit there and, and play Twilight Imperium 4, play and learn Twilight Imperium 4, that's absolutely fine. You can go ahead, and I hope you have a phenomenal time. What a time. Christmas. That would be an amazing Christmas. However, if, like my family... You, you have amazing. People... <laughs> yeah, be intense. If you That'd have be a long if, like... Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> if, like me, you have a family that... Maybe Twilight Imperium isn't their thing. Maybe, you know, play board games, but not of that cap- that level. Um you know, find a game that works with everyone. I've had success in the past of teaching Ticket to Ride to my family, uh, teaching Skull, and you know, may, find find the level that's right for you. Maybe it is yeah. something that's slightly more considered a gateway game. Which yeah, those are those are. Sorry, continue. no, I was gonna, I was gonna quant uh, a gateway game, which you know is kind of quant is somewhat nebulous, but people think kind of a game that is generally easy enough to teach to people and will possibly get them into the world of board gaming beyond yeah, it, the Hasbro it needs to be light. clutch. It needs to be light. It needs to, to me, it needs to have like a strong theme that you can that you can sort of sell to the group a little bit. And it needs to have a sort of short setup and play time. Uh, ones that I go to for introducing people to the hobby, uh, things like Lords of Vegas, which has got that sort of slight monopoly thing of like backstabby, money-grabbing kind of thing. To yeah, it, I but, think that's a really good uh, point a, a, to m- make. But a much um... better game. Uh, I think Monopoly a good point is. to make is that Monopoly is obviously like the cr- classic Christmas game. And if you yeah, want to just kind of introduce people to the wider board gaming hobby, but through something that they m- are kind of familiar with, of just like grabbing cash and, and yeah. you know, just kind of stealing people's money and things like that. Um, Las Vegas is a good chat. Yeah, look, uh, and you can find it. Uh, find it uh, a lot of the games that we're going to be suggesting aren't going to be the new hotness. They are going to be the sort of classic gateway games that have been hanging around for a good few years. You can easily get your hand, hands on them. They're not rare or hard to get their, get your hands on. So I'd also like recommend Takanoko as well. It's a beautiful little game of like of managing a garden and uh, pandas wandering around it trying to eat your bamboo, but you want to grow bamboo. And it's there's a lot of little gotcha things in there, and it just looks beautiful on the table. I'm a quite big fan of Azul from uh, that I picked up this year as well. That's probably the newest game I'd recommend as well. It it does have that slight thing of like there's a puzzle in front of you to solve, so there's not a lot of chit chat across the table. So that that'll work for some groups more than it will for others. Um, I I mean I mean my one my uncle a my uncle and my aunt actually are both uh, very big fans of uh, hill walking and my uncle definitely is, uh, has been a mountain climber so this year i might take down for christmas a uh, k2 by rebel games cheery trying to, trying to, i know but it's it's <laughs> it suits his it, it might suit his theme it might engage him a little bit absolutely and yeah might have a, a lot yeah you can tailor themes yeah so tail- I've, I've tried I, I, i've always tried like um getting my mom and dad into games and my dad's a little bit more enthusiastic about getting into games than my mum is uh, but i have got them into a couple of things like so ragnar brothers blooming gardens because my mum's very into gardening she really likes that game i, I bought them for a couple of, i bought blah, 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 i bought it for them a couple of years ago and they really like that game so yeah it's just a matter of sort of trying to hook into whatever those people are enthusiastic about what the people around your table are also are i think into. something about introducing people to, to board games they can sometimes be put off by um kind of the the vastness of it i i know that a lot of the time just board gaming and tabletop gaming as as a hobble uh, as a hobby generally kind of sometimes gets a bad rep in being kind of like a boring dull hobby that we are obviously trying to dispel but i'd say a go-to company for for that kind of thing and get people involved at christmas mentioned before on today's show is big potato games yes um yeah. scroll lots scroll of really fun family friendly game. games that are just kind of that have a good appeal to them in their visual style as well as their play yeah. style, you know. They just look engaging. And actually, um, Big Potato Games, if you go and look around some of the, like, the bigger department stores, say like um, Debenhams, John Lewis, Marks and Spencers and I, stuff. I think Warston's carry a lot of their stuff as well. Yes, yeah, they Big do. Potato Games are in there where a lot of kind of the bigger tabletop gaming brands aren't in those shops because I think Big Potatoes Games have that kind of Christmas appeal and, and that sellability you know that bringing people together for a for a silly game really yeah i mean if, i i, I, I would fa- say I, I would say uh family friendly most of them however i would take probably uh, a word of caution about scroll the yeah there's a few cards in there that you could easily just take meets, out uh chinese whispers it's got quite a lot of risque phrases on it but that could easily be solved by just writing down a bunch of things that you've all decided yeah. and worked on it's, it's yeah, and just easy removing enough to those cards from the pool 
to hack it, as it were. Yeah, but I'd, I'd also really like recommend to... um, Scroll by them. Um, mm-hmm. Bucket of Doom's good for getting people talking about crazy situations. A little bit of an abstract game that's kind of good for a very quick kind of 10 minute game is OK Play. Um, easily teach it to absolutely anyone. It's essentially a flat on the table four player version of they just re- they have just announced a new version of that under a different name i can't quite remember what the name is off yes, the top of my head, but if you go if I you go big yeah. to big potato site the information is on there basically same game just they've just rebranded it a little bit and improved the quality of the components a bit uh, cool. the same with obama llama which has been changed to i believe zeus on a goose or zeus on a moose and i've just seen because i am on their site that they've released a christmas edition called santa santa banter, banter yeah nice which Very is, nice is somehow involved for the radio one dj but i haven't quite followed that story properly uh, and you could also go to possibly my favourite game for under a ten under ten pounds, and that is Rhino Hero by Haba, or it's slightly more, exp- not that much more expensive, but Grown Up Big Brother, Rhino Hero Super Battle, also by Haba. Two fantastic games, both of which um, are under twenty pounds. Yeah, they're firm favourites um, of the podcast. Th- I'd, I'd um, also put in a shout in if you want something a little darker, a little bit more gothic. I'd really recommend Escape the Dark Castle. That's a really good little box full of sort of like gothic, horror-y kind of stuff. If you if your your family is into that kind of thing, if you've if you loved the sort of choose your own adventure books as a as a as your if you love to choose your own adventure books as a youth and you want to introduce the new kids in your family to that kind of thing, Escape the Dark Castle is absolutely fantastic. I've got two recommendations for some kind of very family friendly games. The first is Dixit. Easily play it with anyone. It's got a really nice, friendly art style. Um, it's a game where you essentially all have a hand of very abstract art cards and you're just trying to link words between them and guess who was the original kind of person who said what word and things like that. Really good. A very similar game to that if you want to kind of just put it up a level to a bit more board gamers game and a bit more competitive would be Mysterium. Um, It takes that and kind of adds a Cluedo element. So by using abstract art cards and trying to um, get across kind of concepts through art without much talking but also a lot of kind of arguments around the table and things is always good fun um mysterium is quite a cool thing yeah. to check if you, out yeah if you, we were talking about a lot of cheap games there if you want something that's kind of skull like but it's got a little bit more bite to it i i'd recommend kakalang and poker or cockroach poker as well that's a really good sort of little bluffing game that is under a tenor easily and really good fun oh i'd love to mention double i was about, to, I was about to say double uh, from Asmodee because it should be under a tenor and it's not but it is a wonderful game it's like a more advanced snap and I have seen adults stare at this game in horror and anger going I can't see anything where young yeah, children it's... have just been clearing so the, the table as Jamie said it's kind of an advanced snap each you it's got a deck of circular cards each with many many images on it you're trying to match things and there's about five different games in in the box and it's D- yeah, like double 12 fantastic. pounds it's brilliant and there's always a star wars version out there as well if that's and there's i think thing. there's a double junior as well there is there's a, there's a, there's, there's very, a younger there's kids there's version multiple as well. different versions of double so you can find one to oh, suit any taste to, I, to, our, to our american listeners that game is called spot it in the yes States. i fa- yes I would also like to throw in a little bit into the hat and go Machi Koro from IDW. Yeah, and yeah. Again, it's a bit more of a gamer's game, but yeah, it's no, really I good. No, I would, I would say it's not. I think it's a nice kind of middle middle ground Yeah. in as much as it takes a little bit of monopoly in that you're buying property, uh, but it changes it instead of it being on a board, you're buying property which are on cards, and it's... And it's got a bit of a gotcha element with some of some of the um, properties bit. you buy, so it, steal it kind of other people's that money l- and things. Yeah, it scratches that little monopoly itch of, um, oh, I get to take these things away from you, and, you know, you're building up at your own towns against each other. And I think it's generally... I mean, I have in my shelf the Bright Lights Big City version, which I believe is all the expansions and the base game in a slightly different way i think that's a very nice version and i think it's easy enough to teach to people yeah and it's so it's a very very simple card game with very inviting artwork very bright artwork it's really really nice check out machi koro people there's loads of recommendations from us there i'd also recommend checking out the recent shop and sit down video which was a bunch of christmas recommendations and most of your sort of favorite bloggers and reviewers will be putting out similar lists this kind of year if you look back on the giant brain blog there's a couple of my own recommendation lists from the last couple of years 
And yeah, what we're basically saying is like, make sure you tailor those games to your audience if they're interested in gardens and that kind of thing. Get them games about gardens if they're interested in gigantic monsters. Get King of Tokyo, you know that kind of thing. Make sure you're 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 playing to your audience, and you're much more likely to get them involved in gaming and uh, enjoying games around the table. So the brainwaves team have been on vacation sort of well i've been down to the far south been down to dragon meet in london uh this was a great time good to catch up with a few friends dragon meet is an annual convention usually happens in the first weekend of december used to be a very rpg focused con now has a much broader church board games card games rpgs all sorts of things but jamie our west coast correspondent has been out and about doing things in glasgow what's been up happening in glasgow jamie yes i am the west coast correspondent ian and sam are both out there in the wild windy east coast and i'm stuck in the bar it is wild and windy tonight it has to be said and to be fair it's quite wild and windy on the west coast as well probably slightly wetter but um oh well yes uh, last week i went to the lucky sparrow games cafe which has just opened on pollock shores road in the south side of glasgow i uh, was invited there for their press night that also down there was uh, ben and charlotte from the unlucky frog um Ian from Unpopular Mechanics, as Ian said, the fine folk from the Penance RPG, and Owen Duffy, who uh, is a writer for The Guardian. And we were all kind of chatting and had a wee game of Scroll from Big Potato Games, which we've just talked about. Had a fantastic time there. Um, the staff at the Lucky Spire are all really fantastic. They're really nice to me. And by all accounts, they've been doing very, very well indeed. Um, a lot of bookings for tables, which is exactly what you want to see. And if you want to go, you either book or get in there in good time. They're going to be expanding in the new year as well. They're going to be developing the basement of that cafe as well. So they're going to have more space. And they've been talk- talking to ourselves and then Lucky Frog about maybe hosting some podcast stuff there as well. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to coming through, playing some games there and uh, getting a chance to chat to the folks for longer. Yes. I, wish, I wish them all the very, very best. Um, and I'll be down as do I. again very, very soon. There have been many fantastic games out this year, but of course, there can only be one winner of the Game Innovator of the Year award from the Toy Association. And that has to be, of course, Don't Step In It. What do you think you do in Don't Step In It, guys? I don't... Do you step in it? No, no, Sam, 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 you don't step in it. That's the point of the game. Um, I don't know. I think you've got to... It's it's an interesting, quippy word game where you've got to... Say I, I'm going to stop you right there, Jamie. It, 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 it is none of those things. It is a plastic mat where you put fake poo on the mat, put on a blindfold, and try to not step in it. As its tagline says, who can avoid the numbers two? Sorry. As the tagline says, who can avoid the number twos to be number one to win? Now, this is a Toy Association Award. We have to remember that. However, this has been awarded to a game that is coming from Hasbro, who have many other games that could definitely qualify for this and we might actually recognize as, you know, a game. But the thing is, Ian... So in, in, what on earth is this doing? Ian, this is not... Okay, not our place to dissemble and criticize the choice of the judges. It is worth noting, however... It is. That, it's that, totally that, our place. No, I know it is. I know it is. It's worth noting <laughs> this, that... That's literally Fireball our job Island, as journalists. <laughs> it's worth noting that Fireball Island Curse of Volcar was also included among the nominations, and that didn't win. And I think a very good reason why it didn't win is because it's not innovative. It's a game... It's a reissue of a game. Well, yeah, but at least it... At least it's recognisable as a board... At least it's recognisable as a board game, you know? So it's... Do you know what? If It, it would be good if we could get a statement from the judges, like... Uh, basically describing their choice and I'd be very happy to listen to it and see it and then go okay that's fair enough and then try and see what the other ones were like you know what it won fair play to it anyway moving on from that to something a little little more pleasant we'd like to give a a shout out to Simon Marr our most recent patron and I've got the name of the patron right this time so that's all good Uh, and also a shout out to our first executive producers the Lucky Sparrow Gaming Cafe thank you very much guys for your for your patronage and we will be through soon to do some gaming stuff for yourselves uh, we'd also like to give a wee shout out to richard from we're not wizards he currently has a kickstarter going to fund some new equipment for himself to get to some cons next year richard puts out a lot of good a lot of really good interviews with a wide range of board gaming people i was on it myself earlier in the year and uh, yeah really good podcast give it a listen and uh, give him a, a dollar or two if you can 
little bit of a change in our Christmas schedule coming up. Uh, the next cast that will go out on the 23rd of September is our Christmas special. That is our special awards show. Slightly longer than the usual cast, covering very different content. We really hope you enjoy that. Give us some feedback to that as well. We really want to learn from that cast. And then our first January cast, we're actually going to skip the usual cast just while all of the Christmas and New Year celebrations calm down. And we will be putting out our sister podcast, our first episode from back in October, Idle Thoughts, where we just talked about the games we were playing that month. Um, if you enjoy it, you can always subscribe to our Patreon and get that every month in your mailbox. Yeah, we just, all of us at Brainwaves would just really like to thank all our listeners for the support of this year. The response to the podcast has been massive, much better than we could have expected. We're really, really pleased with the response to the cast. Thanks very much to all our patrons who have given us a dollar or two to help us really maintain the cast and then move forward with different projects that we want to do. Uh, we've just been blown away by the support. It's fantastic to see. And uh, yeah, Merry Christmas to you all. And thank you very much. And to be honest, even if you haven't contributed to the Patreon, uh, and you've been listening to it and still enjoy it. Thank you very much for Absolutely. for yeah, listening every, to every, it. Every, every listener is fantastic. And thank you very much. Yeah. Everyone who's liked us on Facebook, liked us on Twitter, anyone who's given us a review on iTunes, that greatly helps get the cast out there more. Anyone who's submitted a question for brainstorms, any, anyone who's come up at, at, to us at a con and said you enjoy what we're doing, thanks. It's really weird to meet someone who knows my voice. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, that is a very it, 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 so it is odd to meet someone and go, I've heard your voice. I don't know your face. I like what I hear, though. And go, okay. Okay. I don't like your face, though. Go. Hate your face. No, hate your face. Hate your face. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much. And we will definitely be back in the new year. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, and you, uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can follow us on Twitter at the Giant Brain, Instagram Giant Brain UK. You can find us on Facebook, just search the Giant Brain. Our website is giantbrain.co.uk, and of course, you can get in touch with us through email at giantbrainuk at gmail.com. And please do drop us a line, let us know what you'd like to see in the cast over the next year, over 2019. Drop us an email for, and ask us questions. We will happily answer those. If we get enough emails in some sort of mailbag, we'll maybe even put a new little section in the show to answer such things. I'm sure Sam will come up with an appropriate jingle. Again, thank you very much for all your support in 2019. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks a lot, guys. Merry Christmas. Did you just say thank awesome. you for your support in 2019? Don't think so. Okay. <laughs>